Hello and welcome to our presentation about electronic examination using Jupyter Notebook with Jupyter Hub and EnvyGrader. I am Tim Metzler and together with my colleague Mohamed Wazir, um, we will present this talk. We both work as research associates in the e-assessment project at University bonn rhein -Sieg. So the first question you might ask yourself is why do you want to do electronic exams with Jupyter Notebook? So first of all, since we are computer science faculty, we want students to be able to use the same tools during the semester and during the exam. Then we want to be able to grade from everywhere, so professors shouldn't have to carry a lot of paper around. We want multiple graders to be able to grade simultaneously. We want to take advantage of auto-grading, especially like for simple math questions where you're just checking a value. And all in all, we want to decrease the amount of paper use. So my colleague, Mohamed Wazir, will now talk about the history of our project and the infrastructure requirements. Thank you, Tim, for the introductions. Let's continue with our history of conducted electronic exam in our university. We have been using Jupyter Notebook since 2012. It was known as IPython Notebook back then. We started using USB sticks where the exam was distributed to. Then we booted the PC using the USB sticks with a restricted environment. As the number of students increased in 2018, we switched to a centralized system where we run Jupyter Hub on a single machine and students log into that machine. However, in 2019, not only did the number of courses increase, but also the number of students rise sharply. We decided to switch to a more scalable system by installing Jupyter Hub on Kubernetes, where we can always spin up more nodes if required. Let's start with the requirement of the infrastructure and environment. First, we need servers which support multi-graders and classes. We need isolation of the environment. And then we need servers where the configuration can be dynamically updated. And lastly, we need servers which can handle multiple exams simultaneously. Let's continue with our infrastructure. On the left side, we have grading server where the instructors, grader, professors can create, collect, and grade the assignments. And they are released to a shared directory. And on the right side, we have Kubernetes cluster where the exam and assignment servers are installed. We use LDAP to authenticate the users. The difference between them is that the exam server is only accessible from pool rooms and laptop pools, while the assignment server is accessible from outside university network. Furthermore, the exam users will be scheduled to exam nodes, while the assignment users are scheduled to assignment nodes. On the grading server, instructors can have access to multiple courses via Jupyter Hub services. The assignments are then released to an exchange directory. Here, on the student servers, we mount the release assignments, home directories, and database. This mounting process happens via Jupyter Hub spawner hook. The database is nothing but lists of registered students, which we get from examination surface. The most important part here is that we only mount courses if they are registered. And one of the advantages of our infrastructure is dynamic reconfiguration, meaning that the Jupyter Hub admin can dynamically update the user resources such as CPU, RAM, according to the courses. And we can easily change the courses. We could also mount extra volumes to the user containers such as helpers or shared datasets. Those updates we can do without interrupting the servers. That's it from the infrastructure side. Tim will continue with the front end. Thank you for presenting the infrastructure. I will continue with the front end and the grading software. So um, from the grading software point of view, an examination process consists of three steps. So a teacher has to create an exam, students have to do it, and finally, a teacher has to grade the exam. So the requirements we got from our teachers and professors for creating exams and grading them were that they wanted to have more cell types, like multiple choice cells. They wanted to be able to reuse tasks and templates to quickly build new assignments and exams. They wanted to be able to view the submission one question at a time instead of always seeing the whole submission and export the grades from NBGrader or the grading system into our learning management system. On the other hand, students are mostly interested in ease of use. So for this, they want an integrated help, might be highlighted answer cells. Um, they also want accountability. So um, instead of signing the electronic exam, we hash the exam in the end and let students sign this hash code. This um, serves also the purpose that 
we can prove that the exam has not been tampered with um, after submission and they can prove the same. Then um, we actually want to have a restricted notebook uh, view to avoid unwanted behavior like adding and deleting cells or notebooks because the student actually managed to delete their notebook before submitting for one exam. And we want to restrict the kernel to have more control over what students can execute, for example, to block JavaScript or jump node code. Now, our solutions for that is to rely heavily on our NVGrader fork, use Jupyter extensions like server extensions and front-end extensions, and we're currently developing a package to create template-based assignments, which is called NV Assignment. But all of this dry theories, of course, is relatively boring if you don't see a demo, so let's start with that. So we start by looking at the teacher mode and creating our exam. So we click here on Manage Exercises to get to our tool and the assignment. I will explain the menu points as we go along and we will start with templates. The template basically defines the base format of the exercise. I already created one exam template. Let's look into it. And we can see um, we have here a menu which lets us add cells like footer, group info, header, student info. We already have a header cell here, a student info and a footer. And what you might notice is um, that we have the two words course and semester enclosed in double curly braces. These are variables which can later on be replaced when creating our exercise. So that's it from the template. Let's continue with the tasks. The next thing we need to do is create some tasks. We click on manage tasks and we have task pools. So task pools are basically collections of tasks about the same topic. I already created one for the JupyterCon. It tells us it has two tasks. If I click on that, we see it has um, the task color and sum of squares, which both consist of two questions and are worth 10 points and 15 points. Let's look at the task color. So we again get in menu bar, but we have a different um, set of options. We have add question where we have auto graded code, manual, free text, multiple choice, and single choice. Here, this one has a single choice cell and a multiple choice cell. These are really easy to edit. You just click on edit cell, add a new list item like orange. Well, we already had orange and that's it. You select the correct answer and this will be saved for auto grading later. Now, after creating our tasks and templates, we can create an exercise. I already created an assignment using NVGrader. And for this, we will create an exercise sheet, which is basically just a single Jupyter notebook, which we will call demo exam. First thing we do is we choose our template from before and we fill in the variables. So let's call the course JupyterCon and let's call the semester winter 2020. Next, we choose our tasks from the JupyterCon task pool. We take both of them, add them and generate the exercise. We can see the variables have been replaced and all the tasks are in here. Now, after we generated our exercise, the last step is to go back to NVGrader, to the FormGrader tab, generate our assignment and release it to the student. Next, we will look at the view of the student. Now we see the view of the student after logging in. We can already see that some buttons are gone for creating new notebooks or deleting files. Next, the student selects the assignments tab fetches the exam and opens it. We can see that the student is greeted with a very restricted notebook view where most of the buttons are gone. And when we scroll down, we see that all the cells where students should put their answer in are marked with a big blue bar. And code cells down here have a run button while markdown cells have an edit and preview button to switch between edit and preview mode. They can also not edit any cells, um, which they shouldn't. So let's assume the student is done and submits the exam. So they click on submit and are greeted with their timestamp and the hash code, which we explained earlier. Now the student would write down the hash code and sign it to make sure that they acknowledge that um, this is the correct hash code. Now let's look at grading the exam. So now we're back at the teacher's view and we select the form grader tab collect our submissions, auto-grade them, 
And then finally, we go to the grading view and our new view is the task view, where you can see that instead of looking at the whole notebook, you can look at each task on its own. So let's look at color A. We have one submission for that and we see the student chose the correct answer. All the wrong answers are marked with false and the correct one is marked in green with correct. Now let's assume we're done with all the grading. Then we would want to export the grades to our learning management system. So we click on this and we can export it in a CSV format on an assignment, notebook or task level. Let's do it on an assignment level. We open it and we see the student got 6.6 .6 points in total. After showing you the current state of our grading software and architecture, let's talk about the future work we're planning to do. We want to make the whole software a bit more modular so other people can adjust it to their needs. We want to make more question types auto-gradable, such as short answer grading, because NLP is actually a big part of our research here at the university. And we want to be able to do randomized exams, which we already do, but haven't yet found a nice way of integrating it into the software. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us or visit our GitHub under Digi Klausur. Thank you.